What's going on, y'all? It's me, Troy, and I'm here, of course, for the video. You just clicked on it. I miss you guys. It's been a minute, but um, I got to get ready to go somewhere. I'm waiting on somebody to come pick me up. I wish it was on a date, but child, ain't nobody trying to take me on no date. Even if I do go, I pay for my own food anyway. I feel like, I ain't you. Don't pay for my stuff. I pay for my own stuff. Um, no, no. And I don't mind going to the Cheesecake Factory either, although I don't like the Cheesecake Factory's food. I'm going to just keep it real. Like it's, I think it's overpriced and it's not as good. Um, of course, the cheesecake is why you should go to the Cheesecake Factory. But that's neither here nor there. I don't have a problem with it, period. Um, I'm here to share a book that I'm currently reading. It's for a specific reason. Number one, it's a by black author, a black mystery. Um, number two, it's a new release, which you guys know I'm terrible at reading new releases as they come out. It takes me like sometimes at the end of the year before I even catch up with something. Um, unless it's specific to a series, a long running series that I've been reading for years and I immediately chomp onto that book. And number three, I just kind of want to share with you guys where I'm feeling at the book right now and a little bit of some of the pet peeves that I come across when it comes to reading mysteries um you can label it a rant you can label it a disclaimer i label it like i pay for the wi-fi signal that pumps through this house and therefore whatever i upload is gonna be what i got to say okay all right so that book is called glory be by danielle archino i believe it is and here is the author there she's gorgeous she looks like a movie star to me oh there we go I put my own mylar sheet on it and it's the first book in her glory i said brosard mystery you see the little dagger ding doohickey or ding back okay so this book came out on october 9th and i have been getting i pre-ordered it but i've been taking minor little nibbits and bites of it until now i'm fully in 60 pages within the book and i'm ready to go i'm pretty much invested i don't see any reason to dnf it i'm ready to go i'm enjoying myself basically but there's some stuff that i gotta get off my chest it gets on my nerves girl and you are the people that i come to for these things as it regards books but before we get into that the story looking at the plot secondarily we're looking at the main protagonist of glory she's a late middle-aged woman with a singular solo millennial daughter age daughter now glory is interesting because of her makeup her background revolving around two a pair of griefs grievances um number one she's divorced number two she lost her mother so those two areas of grief sort of reflects themselves as her being a hoarder at least that's what the character characterization is by her daughter but what's interesting about glory that i really love and what I really love about the tone as well as the voice of this book is because it takes place in Louisiana, specifically in Lafayette, it has that vernacular and that 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 sort of colloquialisms, I hope I said that right, that really pulls me in, that I really enjoy as a Southern person myself. And that's something that I always look for when it comes to mysteries, especially by black authors, because that it's that closeness, that comfort, that closeness to myself and my own background that I often don't come across. And so this is fairly close, as I said, the tone and the voice of glory. Now, with that being said, that's an easy, easy means for me to continue reading the book. Easy means for me to pick it up in the first place, because that's exactly what I hunger for. Now, when it comes to the mystery portion of myself, it has to do with Glory's friend, who was a sister of this particular church, who was found murdered. Although they determined it a suicide, Glory, of course, takes it upon herself to fully flesh out what happened to her friend and solve the crime. Because there's a lot of backstory with the two, like before she was a nun or a sister, she had this wild lifestyle going around just i don't know child on motorcycles or whatever so there's a lot of duality in that there's also a lot of duality in glory herself given that she's a woman of her church as well as a gambler or bookie so there's a lot that the author presents here for us the reader to engage with and play with especially within the short span of this book so i'm loving this book i am enjoying this book i find myself laughing a fair amount but i'm at 60 pages and while i am still invested 
when it comes to books where you're going to write a character of a certain age, especially in a mystery, a lot of times authors seem to gamble with their maturity level. And what I mean by that is they backseat the mature approach to solving, you know, being investigative and their prowess to something much more aligned with illogical choices, illogical decisions, and ridiculous decisions. So when I say that I was hesitant or when I was taking nibbles at this, I had to kind of like test it out, like get comfortable, comfortable and familiar with glory and specifically how much of the author was going to take a gamble with you know, glory as a character and her level of maturity. Because that's one of my biggest pet peeves in mysteries is when an author writes these characters who are of a certain age, either elderly or late middle age, such as Gloria, and they decide to make them act like pure children on the page. And they do a lot of ridiculous things. And so I was scared, okay? I was absolutely petrified, but I kept going. And so far, things are going well. However, one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to these mysteries, when people take these characters is, especially with the women characters, is the purse. And Glory did not trigger me until, very slightly she triggered me when she pulled out a fingerprint capturing kit from her purse the powder and stuff i let it go i let that pass i said okay all right here we go i said keep going troy there's a lot more into this that you love so here i am 60 pages and here we go we're going back into this damn purse and the author now if she and the author had Glory pull out a pair of binoculars and a stun gun. I said, here we go. Here we go. The circus has come to town. Here we go. The circus has come to town. Because that's like one of the glaring red flags with me. It's like when these characters pull out pistols and just stuff from their purses. And it's that gamble, like I said, it's that gamble of the maturity level of the character with just the sheer ridiculousness. And I think that one of the primary writers that I can think of off the top of my head that does this absolutely exceptionally well is Nora Deloach, her Mama series, where there is an elderly main protagonist named Mama and her daughter, who is a paralegal, just like it's very much reflective here as it regards Glory's daughter. Um, solving crimes or these little small town crimes in the south very much reflective when I think about it much more so I'm super in this funk of like do I want to I am going to go down this road with glory but I just never can quite understand why do authors persistently do this with these characters like it's not funny it's not it's to me it's not comical at all it's it's a circus and it's like stop trying to do janet ivanovich you know her grandma character because uh, i couldn't read them books because she got on my nerves you know? <laughs> i'm just like child when i got to that point in this book i was like i wish my cousin would come on call me i gotta go to sam's club and give me some water i didn't go to sam's club, club give me some dang on water but glory b is where i'm at and I'm keeping all of my feelings in the back. But I'm going to continue to read this book. Um, hopefully it's going <sighs> to. Hopefully it's going to come to the ground. Stay on the ground. Stay on the ground. And Gloria's not going to pull anything else out of her purse. Oh child. Child, child, child. I can't deal with it. I cannot deal with it. So that's it guys. I just wanted to share that. And get that out of the way. And get that out of my system. I actually pulled my, my thoughts back i tapered back girl but i was i said when i get on this camera i was gonna go in but i'm not gonna do it today because it's a new book new author and we're gonna just hold steady and keep going but if she pulled one more thing out of this damn purse i am gonna flip out i'm gonna flip out stop writing these middle late to middle age elderly characters like this stop it stop stop if you want to do it, like the comedy, 
this is not comedy to me. It's not funny to me. It's not funny. It's ridiculous. Okay. Bye. That's it. <laughs>